All right, welcome back to the Here's the Deal channel. Thank you guys for joining. We're going to go over this real quick. Let me get a second to uh, go over this. We're going to be watching this appeals trial. This is April 1st, 2024. State of Nevada versus Jose Chile de Castro. Let's take a look at this. Let me go. Let me know if you guys can hear this okay. All right, here we go. And the Honorable Judge Zimmerman presiding. <coughs> Please be seated, come to order. All right, Jose De Castro, 23 CR 0135. Good morning. Chris Thor on behalf of Mr. DeCastro. He's present. Nice to see you, Chris. Good morning. 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 We consider very poor in the courtroom. Uh, and and uh, Mr. DeCastro was convicted. He, he is given six months in jail. One thing I know he's going to do today is for no other purpose, no matter what your uh, ruling is, he wants to say sorry. I've asked him if he'd say sorry to the court. I understand that you may see it as that he should have apologized to the marshal. I don't see the marshal in here that he did this. With. One thing I would note for the court is that the issues that I saw seemed to be significant constitutional issues. The court addressed it, but what I did notice is that this should have been really briefed beforehand on First Amendment issues, so the court could have had that. That's uh, no fault of, uh, I think it just should have been done beforehand. I also noticed that at time of sentencing, the state asked for a suspended sentence, but Mr. Castro just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it, and I see reasonably agitated and irritated the court into causing a sentence that is now six months. This man, from what I can tell, Your Honor, has no prior felony convictions whatsoever. I'm doing that upon information and belief. I haven't run the scope. I know the state could do that, but I don't see that he has any felony convictions. He's made his appearances, and I think the time in jail has been shocking to him. I, I know it has because I can tell the reaction of the calls every day and how, how difficult it is for him. I think he pushed this and has uh, is learning a very, very difficult lesson in life. Um, I would ask the court to consider, based upon his ties to the community, with sister here, nephew, he has a whole bunch of people who wanted to come to court, which I uh, suggested may be a very, you know, if it's, they're going to come here, be respectful and uh, mindful of what's already occurred in this court. But what I ask the court to do, given his lack of any serious criminal history, his remorse for his behavior in this courtroom during that trial, and uh, the fact that the state at the time did not want jail time, is I'd ask for an appeal bond, Your Honor, so that the issue can be, uh, these issues can be properly raised. And so with that, Your Honor, I asked for an OR. I would just say a reasonable bail. I, I would suggest that since he came to the trial, since he already has gotten a taste of what inappropriate behavior in a courtroom looks like and feels like, I would ask for a bail in the amount of ten or twenty thousand dollars, a, a appeal bond in the amount of ten or twenty thousand dollars. With that, Your Honor, I submit. Hey. Your Honor, may I respond orally? Typically, uh, pursuant to the Nevada Rules of Criminal Practice, the state has 10 days uh, to file an opposition, but this was placed on calendar very quickly, so I would ask for leave of the court to answer um, orally. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'm in receipt of Mr. Orham's uh, motion for bail or any alternative for his own recognizance release. Um, I would note that NRS 178.488 um, does make it discretionary upon this court whether he would allow bail pending appeal. Um, Mr. DeCastro, there has been a briefing schedule set before Judge Levitt in district court on the appeal, but it's not set to be heard until July. Um, it's discretionary, Your Honor, as with a lot of the bail settings in Nevada, it's discretionary. And the state will oppose this, uh, this court setting a bail at this point. Um, there seems to be this assumption that this court sentenced Mr. DeCastro to six months 
um, in the Clark County Detention Center just because of his conduct or his inappropriate conduct in court. I would venture to say that Your Honor presided over the, uh, over the trial where you found guilt beyond a reasonable doubt for both the obstructing a police officer and resisting a police officer. You saw his conduct um, in the, in the body-worn camera uh, by the officer, and I would venture to say, and I would submit to the court, that the six-month sentence that you imposed isn't simply for his behavior um, in court or his behavior to your marshals, but that it is an appropriate sentence um, placed upon the defendant by the court due to the charges and the evidence that you saw during trial. Um, there's also been this claim that Mr. You know, Castro was um, stay trouble free um, for most of his life. I would venture to say yes, he does not have felony convictions, he does not have gross misdemeanor convictions, but he does have pretty consistent contact with law enforcement. He does have a warrant out of Ohio for a trespass, and I understand that's a piddly misdemeanor, however, he is in warrant status. Um, and he has a pending case in Las Vegas Justice Court um, for the very same offenses um, um, that the court heard um, during the trial uh, here. Um, as to the claim that, you know, hey, there were issues before trial and there should have been First Amendment issues um, raised or briefed prior to, Your Honor, defense counsel was able to argue the First Amendment defense. Um, Your, Your Honor heard these arguments both during the trial and during closing arguments. Um, Mr. DeCastro, when he took the stand, raised them um, as a defense. But Your Honor held, after listening to all of the evidence and applying the law, <coughs> or found him guilty um, regardless. This was not a First Amendment issue. The state stands by that. This was simply the defendant breaking the law. And he was sentenced accordingly for his behavior. It was a conduct, it was a consequence, an appropriate sentence. Um, imposed uh, by the court to the defendant. And so we would oppose any kind of change um, uh, or any kind of bail setting or an OR at this point. This is not a pretrial detention. This is not a pretrial, as Valdez Jimenez was cited also um, in defense counsel's motion. Valdez Jimenez stands for pretrial detention. Mr. DeCastro is no longer cloaked with the presumption of innocence. He has been found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt by your honor. And so at this point, I would ask um, that the six month uh, sentence that you impose stand and that he remain in custody. Mayor, I'd like to read it. Yes, the interpreter, quit reading. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, So the interpreter over there, uh, yeah, Merrick speaking. Oh. Oh, I, I'm talking about the oh, I'm interpreter. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. Your Honor, the, the statute we cited is, uh, in fact, just discretionary to you to determine on appeal, pending appeal, whether uh, a bit of appeal bond can be issued. I, I hear the state, I, I recognize that you found guilty. I'm not trying to in any way argue that. On appeal, there are legitimate issues. The court can see that you know there are some First Amendment issues just from watching the video, things that a, a court could consider on appeal. And so that's the only uh, basis I'm, I'm bringing that up on. But given the fact that I think he really is contrite for, for what he's done. I disagree. Have you watched the videos that have been posted since he's been incarcerated? I have, I'm in a murder trial. Okay, so uh, yeah. so I, I had a chance. So he's going to apologize to me in a minute, but that's not what he's saying on what he's publishing online in his phone calls from the jail. That's not what he's saying at all. And are you aware that he has a trial pending in Las Vegas Municipal Court? He has a case pending in Good Springs Justice Court where he continues to manufacture situations where he'll get arrested. Your Honor, I recognize that's what he was sort of doing for a living, and this is, um, I, he's now being incarcerated. Right. And so, what he's saying in the couple of weeks since he's been incarcerated, when he calls from the jail and publishes them on his website, is not what he's about to say to me. Okay? So, he's going to apologize to me now, but that's not what he's doing publicly, okay? Yes, Your Honor. I, I, I hear that. I, I won't have him speak at this time, but I would still ask you 
to consider that there may be legitimate issues. I think there are for Judge Levitt to consider. And I think these are sort of issues of first impression. That was the other thing I saw, is that in the state of Nevada, I can't find any case law that specifically talks about this filming of police officers. I really, what I would say to the court is I recognize that it's obnoxious behavior. That's what it appears to be. Whether it's protected is another thing that I think higher courts need to look at. But I can see if the court has already made up well, I, I want to be clear. I did not have a problem with him filming, and I said that when I sentenced him. That was not the issue. It was the safety issues that he created with his behavior. And I also did not sentence him because of his ridiculous behavior in court. Um, that wasn't why I sentenced him to jail. I sentenced him because I found him guilty beyond reasonable doubt, and I thought that was the appropriate sentence. I could have given him, given him 180 days on each count and ran it consecutive for a year in jail, but I didn't. Um, and his behavior was un, in, unacceptable in court, but that's not what I sentenced him for. I did not sentence him for his behavior in court. I sentenced him for his behavior for the two charges that he faced. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so your motion is denied. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there you have it. The motion is denied. I hate all this groveling and humbling oneself before her honor. I hate all this stuff. And no human being should ever accept that. That somebody would want to grab the ring of power so that other people can grovel at their feet just tells you everything you need to know. I'm not a lawyer. And I'm not giving any kind of uh, legal advice or anything in this. I'm just giving you my perspective on this. Uh, no apology should be made. No, no. Um, the only crime that was committed was the crime of the officer and putting his hands on a guy who was just video recording. And I saw a couple people saying that Long Island Audit is being arrested as we speak right now. Uh, maybe we can go to that. But also Jersey Watcher said something about getting out a story. And I guess Jersey Watcher's in the room. Jersey Watcher, if you want me to take a look at something, put it in the, uh, well, just give me a, send me an email, contact at highimpactflix.com, Jersey Watcher. So if you got something you want me to take a look at, shoot me a video, contact at highimpactflix.com. Here, I'll put it in the chat. This is for Jersey Watcher. Yeah, Jersey Watcher, if you can do that right now, I'd appreciate it because I get covered up with emails and I just want to take a look at it and see what you got. But uh, real quick on this, let me go back to when Orem, which is, and people are asking, is this the same attorney that was uh, defending Chile before? No, this guy right here is kind of like a uh, an appellate attorney. This is His name is Chris Orem. The other guy was Michael Mee. This is what, listen to what this guy says. Court could consider on appeal, and so that's the only uh, basis I'm, I'm bringing that up on. But given the fact that I think he really is contrite for, for what he's done, that should be that shouldn't matter. I think he's contrite. I think he's apologetic. I think he's really really sorry about what he did in court. That shouldn't even be weighed in this case. That's that should all be irrelevant. It should have been irrelevant in the first hearing where judge Zimmerman, you know, just gave him 90 days consecutive, you know, two 90 days consecutive for obstructing and resisting. It should have been irrelevant. What should have been relevant was, was there a crime committed and Zimmerman, I'm talking to you. Was there a crime committed? Was someone harmed? Was there a real material victim? Was there a law broken? Was there a lawful order given? Did did he not? Did Chile not back up? Oh, may, maybe he didn't back up as much as Officer Bork would like him to back up. But there was no, there was no defi defining guideline. He didn't say back up five feet. I need you to back up twenty five feet. He just said I need you to back up. And then you allowed him to lie on the stand. Uh, Ann Zimmerman, if you've watched my videos, you know Bork lied on the stand. You should throw it out on that alone, let alone the fact that Chile de Castro didn't violate anybody's rights. Nobody was harmed. There was no crime committed. There was no lawful order given because there was no law saying that he couldn't do the very thing he was doing. Refer to uh, Houston versus Hill. Roy Hill actually broke a city ordinance and the Supreme Court said, hey, that city ordinance was unconstitutional. Of course he can record <clears throat> law enforcement officials as they're going about their duty. And I'm hearing that people are giving me credit for 
<clears throat> uh, Chili being in jail. Let's see. You know, people, of course, making fun of him. I don't think there should be any show of contrition at all in the court. The court doesn't care about you. The court functionaries don't care about you. All they care about is generating money and exercising power. This is what it's all about for the court, in my opinion. Um, I'm hearing that people are giving me credit for Chile being in jail because I did a video. Give me a break, man. No crime was committed. Show me, Ann Zimmerman, what crime was committed. You're saying that it was, it was all... <clears throat> officer safety. Well, you know, the unconstitutional ruling of Terry V. Ohio says, Hey, officer safety trumps individual rights. Pennsylvania versus Mims officer safety trumps individual rights. Nothing should ever trump individual rights. And when you put your hand on that Bible and raise your right hand toward heaven saying, I'm going to protect and defend the constitution. You're saying you're going to protect and defend the rights of every single American every American and nothing will ever get in the way of you looking at that objectively and saying, Nope, this right has to be upheld officer safety. Be damned. Anything, anybody's uh, discomfort in, in public be damned. If you're up, if you're in a public place, you have no reasonable expectation of privacy, period. What happened here is a travesty of justice because now you've tied up ta taxpayer money to uh, support a guy in prison who literally is not a harm to anybody except to the powers that shouldn't be who don't want to be recorded. And I do mean powers that shouldn't be. So bringing this back around, who put a one in the room if you want to see what's going on with Long Island Audit. I'm not aware of what was happening until I saw what you guys were saying in the chat room. Or maybe maybe we should just do a maybe we should just do a separate video. Maybe we should just leave this closed. You know, I'm not sure throwing more money is gonna, you know, is the solution here. I'm I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, the solution is obviously that judges and lawyers and bailiffs and police officers do what is right, but I don't see that happening, man. I don't see that happening at all. So let me, what's this right here? Jail terminates call. Yeah, this act of contrition before her honor is ridiculous to me. No, when you don't break a law, here's here's Chili's... Uh, I just put the GoFundMe in there. And there's another thing too. These people who are anti-auditor and are trying to go after people's YouTube channels and get them demonetized and try to get rid of their channel altogether and go after their GoFundMe. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Uh, somebody said it's your fault, Brian. <laughs> put a one in the room if you think it's my fault that Chili's in jail because I posted you know, videos of phone calls in jail. Hey, if it's, if I truly believe it's my fault, I will, I'll take the hit for that. Somebody said I spin worse than mainstream media and CNN. Okay. Give me, give me a, uh, give me an example. Accusation without substantiation is the height of ignorance. What law did he break? What was the law that was broken? What was the exact law that was broken? You know, Roy Hill broke a law, a city ordinance in Houston, and the Supreme Court struck it down. <laughs> what did I say? I can't remember what I said. I'll have to go back in the video. Did I say put a one in the room if you think it's my fault? So apparently a whole lot of people think it's my fault. All right, man. So here we go. Jersey Watcher. Um, I don't see, let me, let me open my email. Jersey watcher. If you're still on, just email me what you want me to cover and I'll take a look at it. I've, let's see. Let me go back. Let me go back to my email here. Hmm. All right. I don't see it. Let me go back. Let me go back to my. Okay, guys. Hey, listen, I appreciate you guys showing up. What I'm going to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, point blank. Where's the where's the victim? Where's the victim? Where's the law that was broken? Brian's a grifter like Chile. A grifter means a con man. What is my con game? A grifter means you're engaging in fraudulent practices to try to get people to give you money. 
Fraud means that you're doing something dishonest and criminal. What is the criminal act that I'm committing? If you're calling somebody a grifter, you're calling somebody a con man criminal. So what is the crime? Who, who am I victimizing? Who am I victimizing? I get it dark. All right, guys, I'm going to, I'm not going to spend much more time on this. I will open up another, uh, live stream in about an hour. We'll take a look at what's going on with long Island audit. I think he's in, isn't he in, uh, Illinois where he's going after that, that corrupt mayor and just out there doing some investigative journalism. If I'm not, what is it called? Dalton, 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 Illinois. Okay, guys, I will end this video. And if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody. You know, don't forget, you know, the freedom has a price. The freedom is eternal vigilance and indifference to this notion is the means by which the people have and will secure their own oppression. I appreciate you. I appreciate the, appreciate the support for Chile, for press with rancor, for Hendry, for reflect your freedoms. Again, in, in none of these cases, is there a victim? In none of these cases is there a crime committed. And yet tons of money is going to have to be thrown at the court system to get these people to have the freedom that they should have anyway, because they didn't harm anybody or threaten to harm anybody or damage anybody's property and not pay for it or steal property. So guys, I will see you in the next live stream and we will do that in about an hour 